Hi everyone, my name's Declan McGlynn. Welcome to Friday Form Live, Point Blank's weekly broadcast bringing you exclusive tutorials, artists, interviews and industry insight every Friday, live from East London. Today we are joined by Point Blank instructor David Clark to dive deeper into Tractor's remix decks. All right, so today we are joined by David Clark to find out more about getting creative with Tractor's Remix decks. If you want to become a Tractor expert, you can study our complete DJ course here in London and look out because we are launching a brand new online Tractor course very soon. So keep your eyes peeled for that on pointblanklondon.com. And remember, we are completely live, so you can get your questions throughout the broadcast and we'll get to them towards the end. David, welcome Hello. to Friday Forum. Thanks for having me. This is your first time, right? Yes, so we be will, gentle. We will go easy on you. <laughs> so, Remix decks yeah. in Tractor, it's kind of a unique thing, right? It is. I, I think it's very misunderstood, which is why right. it's a good thing to do this. Sure. Just to show people what it is, what is capable of, of uh, what you can do with the Remix decks. So, yeah. it's good. Cool, so these controllers here, I mean, we've got quite a few, but Today we're going to focus on the F1 yep. and the S4. That's correct, yeah. So I've got the S4 um, because I have one at home. I know how to use it yep. <laughs> and it works <laughs> great and um, it looks more professional. But also then I've got the F1 connected to the side as well. Yep. You can use remix decks with other, other th um, controllers, but we'll go on to that in a bit. Okay, cool. So the F1 is specifically made for remix decks, right? Yes, yeah. yeah. It's got the highest functionality is as far as I'm aware that native instruments do because it was written and built purely for the Remix deck. Okay, cool. So what exactly is Remix decks? Remix decks, you could look at it um, in layman's terms of 16 sample pads. Okay. Um, but there's no limit to what you can put in each one. So you can actually put in a full song in each pad. So you could have 16 full songs, but on top of that, you can have 16 times four. So you can have so there's four banks, four banks, um, and four decks in Tractor, as you may know. So therefore, you can have four tracks running in A, B, C, and D decks. So it goes crazy, right? On top of all the effects and everything. Nice one. So should we have a quick demo of how it works, and then we yeah, can sure. One of the in. reasons for that, um, one of the things that people use is, say, for instance, I've got a tune playing here. Okay, you might recognise it. And what we can do is, I've got it on. Deck C, as you can see here, and I can EQ out the bass. Now, I know it's not 100% taken out, but it's basically there. Everything's synced, and then we bring in a new bass drum. So that is now the bass drum from a remix deck, okay, which is around there, and then we've, we've knocked the EQ out of, yeah, of the David Sandwich track. So. And you could use that maybe for a transition, or you could get put a weightier kick in or whatever you want. Really. Anything that you want, you can add effects on top. It's very good for um, adding effects and extra things like claps and stuff over minimal techno. And, yeah, yeah. and a lot of minimal techno DJs can use all of it. So that's great. So yeah. that, that's, that is in a nutshell, very basic way of using yeah. the F1 and remix decks. Okay, so let me just stop that. That's it. So I'll bring it back to A. Okay, so that's the first way of doing it. Um, what I'd like to do is show you how to make your own, um, but before that, as you can see on deck C here, we've got um, a full bank. I've set, what I've done is I've set, uh, you see there, I've moved it down to Heartbeat Racing, um, which is all installed into there, and then we can use it again after full. I'll change the quantize. Okay. So bass drum's playing, you can use it as a sample, but you make a whole song, however you want to mash it up. So you add the bass, and then you can add the... And then you add the piano. And basically you just build it up like that. You can knock, you can knock things out by muting it, but it carries on in the background. Or if you want to stop it, you can. Or you can add the next one. Okay, which is out of time there, but yeah. you get the gist. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So there's loads of ways of doing this, and you can, um, yeah, the world's your oyster with this. You can add your own stuff in, 
um, make your own music and then import it in. You can take a whole song and chop it up um, and add it to banks. You can do whatever you want. So it's really cool. So it could be a way of um, playing your own tracks live as well. Definitely. If you exported something from one of your like in Ableton or Logic or whatever, mm -hmm. and then just putting in your originals, splitting them up, definitely them in, along with other tracks. Yeah, I mean the whole point, the reason why it's called a remix deck is because you can remix on the fly, or you can actually use it very similarly to an Ableton push where you can have all four playing together and basically play your song. But if, for instance, you just want to change it live and make it a little bit different to this, your song, you can use it like that as well. Cool. So, should we take a look at maybe how to export something? Yeah, sure. From Ableton Live. So. <coughs> Excuse me. One thing, um, I've, I use Ableton, so I'm going to use Ableton to import into a remix deck, okay? Uh, what you have to do is a, not a fiddle, but you, you have to do a couple of steps. Yeah. So I'll go through this as quickly as I can. Um, I've set up three here, so I've just basically take, taken a MIDI track here, um, and I've added bass drums in there, snare drums in there, hats in there, and for here I'm just going to do one shots. So if, so if I duplicate this and then delete these four tracks and anyone who's with Ableton knows how to use this, I'm going to say, for instance, we like that. So I'm going to have that. Okay. That's that. Then the next one, I'm just going to drag it down just for one shot there. Next one, that's nice. And just put that in there. Okay, so that's that is that. I know sounds are from Ableton. They're all built in, as you. I don't know if you can see there. It says Kit elect Electrify. Right. Um, so I've just taken MIDI there, and I wanted to show people how to take it from MIDI into audio into Remix. Okay, cool. So then, if you highlight all of them there, and you see the bottom here, it says Loop. Take that off, otherwise it doubles the bars in Remix, which I found out. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Then what you want to do is you want to. Um, Control T and make as many audio tracks as there are MIDI tracks. Okay. Then, when you do that, you highlight all four of them again. You freeze the tracks. Okay. And then that way, once you freeze them, you can copy them or drag them over to copy and paste here. But what I like to do is put it in arrangement. Okay. So if I do that, now if I zoom in, they are all the tracks, okay, down there. Does that you can see that? Yeah. So there's three bass drum, three snare, three hats, and three one shots. Yeah. And then what I want to do is I'm going to press um, Option J, which is joins them all, and I'll show you the reason why for that. And I'm just going to quickly rename each one uh, BD uh, snare. Hi hat and one shot. Okay, then what I'm going to do just very quickly, I'm going to split them again. So I'm changing them so they're going to be user friendly to fit straight into the remix decks. Okay, so end at that and then cut there. Okay, so they're now all split. Sorry, they're on. They are now all split into. Now we'll split into four, <laughs> there we go. four tracks. Yeah. Okay. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the top one and highlight the bottom one. So right click and you see where it says crop clips. Okay. So what I've done is I've taken them from MIDI into audio. Okay. And then I've cropped the clip. And then if you just click on any one here, right click, you can show in Finder and you'll see it there. Now, as you can see, what I'll do is I'll just arrange by kind, just so everyone can see properly. Get rid of all the Ableton files. In there. Okay. What is done? The reason why I did the joining and then the uh, renaming, then cutting, is what you what happens is here it goes BD BD one two three. It does it automatically for you. Okay. If you don't join them, as I found out when I was working it out myself, um, it will just name the BD and then it will just say freeze, freeze, freeze. So you don't know where. Right. Anything is. So That's a good tip. Thank you. So what I'm gonna <laughs> I like it. I, I try. And then so what I'm gonna do is add the bass drum in here. And then obviously one, two, and three, you can just highlight and just drag in. Then the next one, hats, 
I like the hats over here. One, two, three. One shot over here. One, two, three. And snare drum in there. One, two, three. Now, another thing just to be aware of is when you drag it in, you see around here it says 67.5. If I go over to Ableton, it was 124. Okay? So it halves it. And I want everyone to be aware of that because I couldn't work it out when I first did this a while ago. It's like, why is it playing slow or wrong? So what you have to do, yeah. unfortunately, is click on every single one and times two. Okay? Yeah. It's slightly faster because the pitch fader is it? Yes, thank um, you. One of those decks. Yeah, that's fine. I will change that in a minute. Um, yes, so you have to go on to each one and times two, each one, but I'll only do the top ones just because, yeah. just for quickness sake. That's something to just be aware of. Yeah, yeah exactly. There you go. It's one, two, four. That one's strange. Yeah, that one's doubled up. I might have freezed that beforehand because I was prepping. So I do apologize about that. Um, then what you need to do is you, it's very simple. You can. Uh, you see down here, it says that is a one shot. Okay, so there's a couple of types of remix yes, sorry, samples. Yeah. Yes. And one of them is one shot where it just plays once. Yep. And, and then you've got a loop. And then a loop. And the right. good thing, if you've got an F1 controller, you don't have to go and click all this. What you have to do is you just press type. Okay. And see where it's all, um, it says PL, and it's, for us it's all blue. Okay. That is now changed to green for us. And I don't know if you can see around where my mouse is, that changes it from one shot arrow to loop. And then you can just highlight all these and they're all right. like that. Okay, so that means they're all looped, they're all synced, they're all ready to go. So if I just press the hats, it plays and it's one, two, four. Um, and if, hopefully if I change deck and I add something else, it's synced perfectly, as if by magic. Cool. Okay, so that's really cool. So now you, it's endless because what people don't realise is you can make things in Ableton, and you can take your own songs or other people's songs, cut them up, and then put them into remix decks, and you can have whatever you want. And um, it's really good fun as well. Really, really intuitive, and yeah, you can do this um, from machine. The only difference is you don't have to freeze it, turn it into audio first and then bring it in to the decks. It just automatically will do, know it because Native Instruments is yeah. kind of connected. But with Ableton, you just have to freeze and turn it into. Um, and then on the F1 as well, you can switch between deck A and deck C. So the left side, and then if you had another F1, you'd be able to switch from deck B, B to deck D. D. Right. You can control that. So that's really cool. And just to stop, I can just press Shift, and then I'll control the other one, and it's shift and that. So it stops. Cool, and those decks aren't limited to just playing through the mixer, they can actually go through effects as well, right? Exactly, right, so if for instance, let's stick with hats, okay, and then let's add something nice down here. Okay, yeah, let's. Okay, so what we can do is at the top here, I don't know if you can see, you've got your filter, so on the shift, we have key lock, we have effects, monitor, and punch. What that means is obviously the key lock, so it locks the key. Effects, so we want to turn them all on, okay? Monitor, to hear through the headphones, I always have them on anyway. And punch, which I will come back to, okay? okay? And again, I'll just do that with key lock, effects, great. Okay, so I can change the filters. Okay, let me stop the um, hi hats just so you can hear it properly. So we're just looking at C now, deck C. Okay, that's filters. You see, so it brings it out. Okay, which is great. So that is just filters are always on there. That is what they're assigned to, and it's really good. And you've got your individual faders as well, so you can block them in and out. And you've also got a, a mute button down here, but it st carries on playing, so you can bring it in when you want, which is cool. Yeah. Okay. Also on the effects, because I've got the effects here, and I've clicked the effects here, okay, so we want deck C. Here, I'll do it now. Okay, 
you could that also means you can use whatever effects are built in okay so for instance i've got gator on at the moment because i like it because it sounds a bit like a scratch but what's really cool is if you take off everything but the bass drum you can just affect the bass drum and that's something you wouldn't be able to do just using a normal track deck no yeah because everything is together isn't it um at the end of the day you know you've got a consolidated file and so you affect everything whereas this you can assign what you want to it it's really cool and you can have um tractor now allows four effects um in in their software and three single ones in each one so you've got 12 different 12, effects yeah. you can assign at the same time and it's not that i personally would ever use 12. yeah so when you load an effect does it get does it get analyzed in the same way as a track does for example does it have key analysis as well as um analysis that's a good question you're saying the effects the oh sorry the actual um Sample, the, that example. the sample does, yes. Yeah. Um, what I'll do just quickly while I'm here, do you want me to leave the music on? Is, um, I'll just turn it down a bit though. Is, I just wanted to show you basically how to save it. Okay. It's before I go on, sorry. Um, if, so if you've got, maybe it's an original track you've done and you've exported yeah. the parts from Ableton or you've just come up with a nice loop that you want to come back to. If maybe it works as a transition between two songs you always play. Exactly, <laughs> you yeah. You just and save it as a... Yeah, so yeah. You, if you, um, you can basically click here. There's lots of different ways to do it, actually. But if you right click there, and then you can save it down there as a new one. And then it will go instantly down into here and then ready for your next go. In fact, I was messing around the other day and I've got David Test down there. Right. I was doing. But with the analysis, yeah, it analyzes it exactly the same way. Um, if I can bring that open here, let me show you. See, down here, uh, let me just press space. Down here is my what I did yesterday, exactly the same way as I just showed you. And it has the BPM and it has the key in there. I, the reason why it says none is because I haven't played the, these ones, but the others have gone into 1Ms, 12Ms, etc. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it works exactly the same way. It's cool. really quite cool. Yeah, and the, there was something you mentioned, I actually forget what it was called. Oh, the punch. Yeah. That's the one. Punch. punch. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me, punch is fantastic. Basically what that means is you can punch through a song. So if for instance you are playing that bass drum, now at the moment without punch on, I would have to wait for the quantize, which is one beat. Let's just make it four just to show you. Okay, if if I don't do it on the one. <laughs> yeah. You're too good, so mate. If, too good. Well, that's what you do. You, you can't not do the one. Yeah, can you? It's, so yeah, it waits it's until that beat and then comes through. If you put punch on, it will punch through it. So I'll be able to go, okay, and then change that back to quantize. I'll do a quarter. And obviously you have to be on time, but you can punch through that. Yeah, which means you can beatbox for as it, um, or um, you can do just a, um, if you've got, say a roll here, just to build it, and then you, right. you only want to do, do that, da, 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 and then back together. So that's really cool. That's a really good um, thing to do is punch. So Cool, and if, if you were um, wanted to sample something yeah. into a mix deck. This is, I really like this as well, as you can tell, I'm a, yeah. big, a big fan of everything. Well, I mean, the thing is, like, it's, it's, it's super flexible, and I mean, the F, we always use the F1 for this whole thing, yeah. and that's kind of amazing. Well, that's, that's great. I mean, basically, if you had a little, I think it's a Z1, and two F1s, you've got everything you need, a sound card, mixer, and everything. So yeah, with this, you can capture from another deck, okay? Um, as well as, I don't know if you can see on the tractor, you've got up here a loop record that a lot of people overlook. Yeah. I'm not gonna go into that today because that's um, a bit longer, winded, but you can capture from another deck as long as it's not a remix deck because it, it, it's just too much information for it. So I'm on, uh, let me have a look here. So I'm on deck A, so I'm looking at this deck up here, okay? I'm just going to delete um, these top two here. So these two are now blank. I'm now going to tell this where to capture. So I'm at the moment it says capture L, which means loop, or B, or D. You see it going yeah. across, okay? 
So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I'm on here, press play, or the other one. Okay, so this is playing the bass drum now on deck D. I've assigned that capture. Now if I press capture now, I can change the loop size in D without even touching a controller. So I'm not going onto this to control it, I'm actually controlling it here. So if you can see that, yeah. it's there. So now all I have to do is press that pad. Okay, it flashed up here. I'm just going to show you again. I'm going to do two bars and I'm going to press this pad so it will come up to there. So I'll just capture it there. And that's it. Now I can do whatever I want, stop that. And as soon as I press capture, I can use it. And that can be the same for if you put a, in the S8 now, you've got the mic inputs. So you can capture that just by capturing live input, pressing that so you can do on the fly vocals, you can do backing vocal harmonising, just live, and then you can do everything else on the DJ software. And you can maybe come back to it later in a set. Oh, back totally, yeah, it's like there, isn't it? Yeah. You, you think you can, you've got 16 potential songs there anyway, so you can do whatever. I mean, I personally DJ on A and B and use my C and D for remix and live inputs, for instance, vinyl, that sort of thing. Yeah, so yeah. it's really cool, it's, it's, it's really quite endless. Yeah. And there's, there's a couple of people already asking about stems, which I kind of anticipated, but we'll, we'll get to that in another <laughs> SFL, but just quickly, um, how do stems differ? I mean, it's going to change the way you approach remix decks. Stems is, is great. It's kind of like, wow, it's, it's awesome. It's just, you've got, obviously, to very quickly, stems is five tracks, one all-encompassing, so it looks like a normal song, and then you've got four splits, so you could have your vocals, your melody, your bass line, your drums. And that means it's very similar to this, but it's for the D D2 and the S8. Yeah, well, this and is the S8. Right? This yeah. is the S8. That's why we put it on here because it looks pretty. <laughs> yeah. And it looks good for well, today. <laughs> and um, yeah, this uh, the D2 is basically this half of the S8 without the mixer unit. Okay. And stems is going to is fantastic because you can, whereas I EQ'd the bass drum off the song earlier. It's not 100% because it's EQ'd, yeah. whereas this is, stems are 100%. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, fan it's fantastic. So, um, yeah, it's, it's kind of like, wow. I got told by Native Instruments that the other day, the ultimate setup would be the mixer, the um, two D2s and two F1s, and it will control everything you need, so. Yeah, yeah. there you go, guys. Start saving. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, we've got some questions coming in sure. um, before we move on. Um, we've got a question from... Let me just quickly find that who asked this question. Joseph Berry is asking, when bringing samples out of Ableton or Logic, would you process the samples, um, EQ, compress, uh, mix down and master them separately? Um, yeah, definitely. You, you treat them exactly like you would a song. Right. So I did MIDI on purpose because one, I've not seen anyone do MIDI in Ableton 2 Audio 2 Remix decks. But also I wanted to show you how easy it is for someone who's just started, who just uses the um, MIDI files. But yeah, treat, treat it exactly the same. You want to you want to do how you want it to sound live in the club, yeah. In in the club, in the band, whatever you're doing, that's what you want to do. So yeah, definitely compress EQ, limit whatever you need to do, and then plonk it into remix decks. Cool. That's good advice. Um, let me just quickly check. <laughs> Someone's asking if the new structure if they're not a farmer. Unfortunately, not. You have to be a farmer to use this stuff. <laughs> well, I'm from Norfolk, so yeah. <laughs> I think that's what you know. Um, we kind of covered this already, but it's a good point. Is Dishil Vagal is asking, is it necessary to remix in the same key on Dex? No, because you, well, ideally, it's Would you be able there, to tune but you fly? can change the pitch. Oh, right, okay. Okay, cool. so for instance, I've got this uh, playing, which I captured from down the bottom. I can um, do that, which is basically shift and type, which is the pitch. Hold the button I want to do. And, and it goes in 12 semitones up and 12 semitones down. So if you have, which is it's a good question actually, if you have um, vocals that you want to pinch from another song, you don't have to detune it first, 
because most songs are pretty much in the 12 semitone yeah. range. So no, you can totally do it on the fly. Or if you were sampling the, the vocals from a famous track yep. and wanted to bring them back in with another track later on, they don't have to be in the same. Nope, you can just change it then. Yeah, cool, nice one. Um, let's just see if there's any more questions. Uh, Hyper Production TV is asking, when you're saving a session, do you have to make sure all the audio files are saved with it, or does Tractor save it all into its own project file? It saves it all, but what you can do is you can export it just to be safe. So, for instance, if you go to All Remix Decks, and on my David Test is there, I right-click, Export Remix Set, okay, and it will... So yeah, so basically you, you type it in and it will save it all together so you can put it on a USB stick and load it into someone else's and you can save your collection as well. All right, nice so, one. Yeah. So you could save it back into Ableton, start working on it again. Yeah. Definitely. Separately, yeah. Yep. Cool, nice one. And there's one more, which is, um, well, we actually kind of covered this already, but is the process you've gone through for loading and playing the sounds also the same for the new Native Instrument stems files? But from what we know so far, there's going to be a separate stems application yes. that allows you to split things up like that. Yeah, basically, um, we, as me and you know, we're uh, still hungry for the stems. I yes. managed to get a play with the beta the other day and I was quite um, impressed and it is as good as it makes out, but you've got to watch this space for the stems because we might tell you something and they might change it. So. Yeah, yeah. We want to say too much. And just, we'll definitely cover stems in the future. Oh, Friday it's a whole yeah. thing. D two SA and stems is a huge thing, and I'm yeah, sure yeah. it'll be popular. I just, cool. I just want to say I've touched on about five percent of what the F one can do as well. So if you're interested, you should have a look on videos and stuff, and you know, with Point Blank as well, because it's incredible, and there's loads to learn on just that one unit alone. Yeah, oh, that's actually, quite cheap, right? Like, 120 quid, something like that. I actually taught one of the courses here the other day, and so someone went out and bought it straight away. So. Yes. And I'm not on commission. So. <laughs> not yet. Not yet, not yet. <laughs> All right, nice one. So we are unfortunately out of time for today's FFL. If you want to dive deeper into Tractor, just as David said, you can come and study it here in London. You can head over to pointblanklondon.com to find out more about our complete DJ course. We'll be back next Friday for another FFL, so we'll see you then. Cheers.